to burrow furnace. Is it worth the hype? Hi, I'm Jed, this is Cook Culture. So Burrow Furnace is a small little craft maker of fairly exquisite cast iron uh, out of New York. Uh, they were made very famous in, in broad culture uh, when Anthony Bourdain went to visit them and followed along their entire process to see how they make this really cool cookware. Uh, that's when I first really paid attention to it uh, and really wanted a piece ever since then. So they have always had this beautiful kind of Scandinavian type design that is very non-North American, uh, which I really appreciate. I love Scandinavian designs uh, and I was always intrigued. But it wasn't until they came out with their latest edition, so this is the latest update to their design. They say that they've improved the handle uh, and some of the, the, the coolness of how that the, the heat transfers into the handle. Uh, and you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it looks. I had wanted one for a long time and I finally bit the biscuit. Uh, they are not an inexpensive pan to start with and also then transferring it into Canadian dollars and paying for shipping and brokerage up into Canada. This is in an excess of 300 Canadian dollars, maybe around $330 I think it ended up as, which is a, you know, for a seven inch pan, ended up being quite a lot of money. So, oh, that is kind of a little bit of a negative uh, if you're really concerned about the price of your cookware. If you love to just spend all your money on cookware, then that doesn't matter so much. Uh, the other thing that I don't love about this pan and I just want to talk about the only two negative to begin with because I only have them, that was price. And the way in which the handles and the stay cool handle are cut, um, they are a little low just in, in the edging of it compared to the edge of the pan. Uh, and it limits the volume of the pan. If you've got anything in there, if you're going to simmer anything or do anything that's going to create excess of, of volume. And that's where I find that I get some spilling. Uh, that's the only thing from a day-to-day -day use that I don't like about this pan. Uh, just make a note right now. I am not sponsored by Burrow Furnace. I don't know anybody at Burrow Furnace. I paid for this pan. I bought it off their website, had it sent to me. I'm making this video because I'm super impressed with this pan. I'm very, very happy with how it's worked. Those are the only two things that I don't like about this pan. Everything else about it, I absolutely love. Uh, and the journey of falling in love with this pan was quite interesting because when it first came out of the box, a very you know nondescript brown box with a really nice personalized message to me in it, um, but everything was quite plain. Um, it kind of moving around in the box a little bit. It wasn't really as fancy or as, as highly thought of as some of the other highly marketed pans. Like if you order a pan from Made In, it comes with some really great marketing around it. And you really get excited about using the pan because of all the things that they tell you when you open the box and the experience is really amazing. I do like that. I like giving the consumer a really nice experience when they buy a piece of cookware and they feel confident about where they're going. With this one, I think they have a good understanding that, that somebody who's gonna buy this pan is gonna know what they're doing. And so they don't spend any time or money on getting the pan prepared for you with literature or you know telling you all the promises on the box. It's just a pan in a brown box. Uh, so when I got it, I was excited about the pan, but I was a little bit apprehensive because when I first saw the surface in detail, it's actually got quite a bit of texture. More like what you expect from a lodge pan than something like a field pan or a stargazer pan or a smithy pan or a butter pat uh, or a finex. You know, it hasn't been CNC'd, it hasn't been you know, ground smooth, it's got texture to it. Uh, like I said, like, you know, like a black lock pan even. Um, and so I was like, okay, well, you know, how's the experience of this gonna be? I had no idea. Uh, so I went to work with cooking with it and right away I found it extraordinary. The non-stickability of this pan almost immediately was tremendous. One of the best, if not the best pan I've ever used out of the box. Uh, and everything that I've cooked with in this pan everything has cooked perfectly. The denseness and the thickness to the, the density of the material, it, it seems to be absolutely amazing because of the even consistent results that I get on this pan all the time. So I'm gonna show you those. I'm gonna cook today two eggs and then I'm gonna cook up some onions. I'm gonna cook up some potatoes, make a quick hash and just show you how beautiful these results are that I'm getting out of this pan. So, you know, I, I am a big fan 
that's obvious. I'm promoting this pan because I want you to be able to have great options for, for cookware that is an alternative to nonstick, and that's why I'm putting the time into this video today and why I think this is a, a, such a tremendous pan. But let me show you the results. Here we go. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna cook in this guy is two eggs. I'm gonna get some uh, grapeseed oil in there. Get it around, nice small little pan. It's perfect for two eggs, if two eggs is your thing. So I'm gonna get those guys in there. So I've, I've found that the, the even, evenness and the consistency, the way in which the, the cast cooks, comparatively to carbon steel that is, and that's really what I kind of compare um, you know, cast to, is like if I'm cooking on the stove top, what's the best option for what it is that I'm cooking? Uh, and the way in which that eggs have been cooked in this pan are just brilliant. Um, so, you know, as you can see, things are pretty nonstick here. I don't have the, the, the most consistent eggs, but let that kind of cook through just a little bit more. Just, you know, being cognizant of some over browning on the edge here. But things, as you can see, don't really like to stick to this surface. The pre-seasoning and the texture that it just absolutely works brilliantly. So I'm very, very happy with, uh, with everything that I've done so far. So we'll just let this cook through for a minute longer and then we'll remove it from the pan. There you go. All right. So, you know, there we go with a beautiful nonstick result. And just, that pan right on out so mm -hmm. you know a little bit of, of browning in there um you know for those that don't like browning but i find that cast and carbon always do okay so egg done i'm gonna give that just a nice little wipe and as you can see that cleans up easily and beautifully we've still got that on the heat i'm gonna throw a little bit more grapeseed in there get it all around the pan and we're gonna get our Onion on there and love the smell of cooking onions and now we're just going to let that cook away and show you how beautifully even this pan cooks you know with everything just you know sliding around in this pan so let's just do a little time lapse here and we'll cook these up in a second Okay, so we've got these onions all done up here that are beautifully salted and ready to go. So nice, even brownness. Um, you know, nice and caramelized, nice and translucent, and you know, absolutely zero sticking. Like they just, you know, there's, there's no bits or pieces on there whatsoever. So beautiful, even result. And uh, that is, you know, exactly what you want in a finished result of cooking some onions. So, you know, as I was saying, this pan will cook whatever I've asked it to just beautifully. And I'm just wiping that pan out and it's ready for the next thing. So I'm not even gonna wipe that out. I've now got some potatoes. We are going to cook up some potatoes here and make a quick little hash. Uh, I find potatoes, the starchiness of the potatoes in a lot of pans can be quite sticky. That's why I wanted to do potatoes because it can show that stickiness of them. Um, and we're gonna use the existing oil that's on here from the onions. I'm not gonna add any more oil. So I'm just gonna rinse the water here and put the, the potatoes right into the pan. Okay, so potatoes right into that pan. You know, there's a little bit of oil in there, not much, but we've cooked the, um, eggs and we have cooked the onions and now we're cooking the potatoes in the same pan kind of one right after the other and those were some soaked uh, potatoes they weren't in the water for very long 
Uh, that little guy coming off the end, as I was saying. Just have to be a little bit careful about things coming off of the end out of the hand helper. But, uh, you know, those guys are cooking in there just beautifully. So we'll just let those cook away and uh, see what kind of results we get. Okay, so I put a little bit of water in there to reduce them, just to kind of steam cook them through. Um, you know, the starchiness, without having any more oil on there, they are, you know, sticking a little bit, but really very, very little. If, I, if I'm moving them around all the time, um, some more fat in there would be kind of friendly, and it would also fry them up. So if I'm, I'm kind of trying to understand the limited amount of oil that I'm going to use for them to continue not to stick, but, you know, in reality, a little bit more oil in here is going to bring some more flavor and texture to the potato. So it's that balance of, you know, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to cook without oil or with oil? So I'm going to finish these guys up by putting in some more grapeseed oil. Not much, just a little bit. And it's going to really help, you know, bring the brownness and the crispiness out in these potatoes. So we'll just let those cook through a little bit more. They're still kind of hard in there, but that's going to give them some more crispiness. But they are doing exactly what they should be doing. But we'll give them a few minutes here to start to brown up. Okay, so finished up these potatoes that look absolutely amazing. Like for me, if I'm making hash, that's the kind of hash that I like. So, if we look at this surface, get rid of all the bits and pieces. You know, we've got a little bit of cooked on carbonization here, but that's, it's just surface level. You know, this pan is in such beautiful shape once it's done. Uh, and I'm gonna take that to the sink, and I'm gonna clean it up, and I'm gonna be right back. Okay, so that was literally five seconds of cleaning in the sink. And that is totally done. Beautiful, smooth, smooth surface. And it is right ready to go for a post seasoning. So I'm gonna use my Cook Culture beeswax paste that is a combination of grapeseed oil and uh, sunflower oil. And I will heat this pan. I'll put on a tiny bit of grapeseed oil paste on here and that will then heat and polymerize and I'll keep building that surface on top of this really great factory seasoning. And that is done and ready to go. So I am so happy with this pan. It is such a great little size. It does everything so far that I've cooked in it just so incredibly well. Um, so I, you know, I couldn't really recommend this highly enough. So Burrow Furnace is the brand, burrowfurnace.com. I imagine I not totally sure, but um, you can easily Google Burrow, Burrow Furnace and find it. Uh, they don't always have them available. Sometimes you have to wait a little bit. But if you're looking you know, for a gift idea for somebody who has good cookware, but there's something that they may be missing, this is a really unique, cool little piece that could fit into anybody's collection. I absolutely love it. So I hope that's been interesting. Please, any questions, throw them below. Thanks so much. Thank you.